If you are just starting out with stop motion, especially if you are using a DSLR, you probably know how confusing it can be to know what camera settings to use. You've probably had the perfect look one time, but then the next time it just looks totally different. Today, we're gonna go through the best camera settings for stop motion, so you can easily make better stop motion. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to Learning Curve Tech, where I learn tech with you. The first thing you should know is what camera you're using. I use a Canon Rebel T6, which is a DSLR that comes in at around $300. Depending on if you buy it new or used, of course, because it is an older camera. If you want to know what cameras are the best for stop motion, then you should check out this video right here. Okay, now the first thing you're going to want to do is turn up all of your auto settings. The reason you don't want any auto settings at all for stop motion is because auto settings you know, will automatically change all of the different aspects of your camera settings, which could affect the look from frame to frame, which you really don't want. So switch over to your camera's manual mode if it has one and turn off the auto white balance, the auto exposure, and any other auto settings. This is really different from camera to camera, so I can't really give you a exact guide for how to do it, but you can always go in your camera's manual and that's probably the easiest way to find out how to turn off your auto settings. Okay, now for real settings, the first thing that you're gonna wanna know about is the resolution. This basically means how pixelated it looks. A higher resolution will generally look better, but it does take up enormous amounts of space on your computer. I like to use small or medium super fine because they still have incredible amounts of detail while being significantly smaller file sizes. Another one you might see is called raw plus large, but I would stay away from that unless you are looking for the best quality possible or if you're doing really intensive editing or really intensive visual effects. Otherwise, medium super fine is probably the best way to go because it's the best bounce between high quality and low file sizes. The next setting you will want to consider is the shutter speed, symbolized by the letters TV. Shutter speed determines how sharp or blurry your motion is. A higher shutter speed will freeze the motion, but it will also make it darker, and a lower shutter speed will blur the motion, and it will also make it brighter. However, as you should be using a tripod for stop motion anyways, I always just choose the shutter speed based on the other two settings. On the other hand, make sure you don't use too low of a shutter speed, because the click of the shutter can start to cause some shake in your image. The third setting to know about is the aperture, but if you are finding these tips helpful so far, please hit the like button. Thanks for being awesome. Anyways, the aperture controls something called the depth of field, which is basically how sharp or how blurry the background is. Aperture is also known as f-stop, such as f1.4, f5.6, f11, and so on. A low number will make the background blurrier and will also make the image brighter, while a higher number will make the background sharper and will also make the image darker. For example, here's a picture taken with different apertures with the other settings adjusted accordingly. The image on the left, which has the blurrier background, is the lower number, while the image on the right with the sharper background is the higher number. This setting is actually built into the lens, so not every lens will have the same numbers, but the same principles apply to all lenses. Now, the fourth main setting is the ISO. To make it simple for you, the ISO is really just the sensitivity of the camera's sensor to light. A high number will make the image brighter, while a lower number will make the image darker. However, the low ISO numbers, such as 100 or 200, usually look best because the higher your ISO, the more noise will be introduced into your pictures. And by the way, if you don't know what noise is, it's basically just this nasty thing that looks kind of like film grain, but it's also kind of multicolored, and you might see it like around here or something in the dark parts of the image. So it really just doesn't make an image look that good at all. Yeah, it's terrible. And here's a quick comparison of different ISOs. The one on the left has the lowest ISO and the one on the right has the highest ISO. Notice how the noise changes from image to image. That's why you typically want to keep your ISO as low as you can. These are the most important settings for stop motion, but there are so many settings that I could go on and on about. So if you guys want to see more videos about those settings, let me know in the comments below. You can also subscribe to get more stop motion and other creative tech videos every week. Also, check out one of these videos to learn more about stop motion. That's all for now, guys, and I'll see you next time on Learning Curve Tech. Thank <laughs> you.